Hey, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about how to finance real estate with no money down. A lot of people are interested in this because they understand the big benefits of real estate investing. They want to get involved, but they're tight for cash. Hey, I get it. Been there, done that myself, got the t-shirt. So today we're going to be talking about how to finance real estate with no money down, or at least with none of your money down. That's what we're talking about here today. All right, today we're going to talk about a couple of different things. I'm going to share with you four creative ways to get into real estate investing with no money down. Then I'm going to be talking about OPM and OPC. What does that mean? What's the difference between the two of those? And then I'm also going to be talking about who are the absolute best people you should focus on as investor partners and where to find them. Stay tuned. All right, first of all, let's look at a couple of different creative ways that you can invest in real estate with no money down. This is what I did way back in the day, back in 2003 when I first got started. I did 18 deals in 18 months with little or no money and none of my own credit. Never went to a single bank, never qualified for financing, none of that kind of stuff. So it is definitely doable. And some of the different ways that you can do this is if you find a motivated seller who owns a property free and clear, then you can get owner financing on a deal. That means that the owner of the property will be the bank for you. You don't have to qualify for financing. If you're a really good negotiator, you might be able to get it with no money down or very little money down, maybe as little as a thousand to five thousand dollars. So relatively speaking for a real estate deal, very little money. So that's one way you can focus on owner financing type deals. Another thing that's kind of similar to that is you can do deals subject to the underlying financing. So let's say you find a motivated seller who has a mortgage on the property, um, so they don't own it free and clear. They do have financing on the property. You can arrange a deal. You can buy it subject to the financing that already exists. So back in the good old days, you used to be able to just take over that mortgage without qualifying for it. Nowadays, that doesn't happen very often. But what you can do is you can get title of the property, yet the mortgage stays in the owner's name. Now, why on earth would they possibly do this? They'd have to be pretty motivated. They'd have to be pretty desperate. But there are certain circumstances where that happens. I've done that kind of deal twice in the past. So that's a creative way. I didn't have to come up with any money. Well, I did come up with a little bit of money to help them bring up their, their payments up to date so they weren't behind on their payments. But relatively speaking, no money down in that kind of deal. Another strategy you can look at are sandwich lease rent to own deals. So that's where you find a motivated seller and instead of buying the property off them directly, you get an option to purchase the property at a future date and you get the right to lease that property and sublease that property to a tenant buyer. So it's called a sandwich lease type deal. You're leasing the property with an option to purchase it and then you're subletting that property to a tenant buyer with agreement for them to buy the property two or three or four or 10 years down the road from you at a specific price. So the difference between the price you're gonna pay the seller and the price that the buyer is gonna pay you is a big part of your profit. The difference between the monthly payment you are making to the seller and the monthly payment your tenant buyer is paying you is a big part of your profit. The fact that you're putting little or no money down as a deposit up front and getting 10, 15, $20,000 option fee from your tenant buyer as another big part of your profit there. So that's another creative way to get into real estate investing with none of your own money. And the last creative strategy we'll talk about are options. And options are basically kind of like acting like a realtor. So you find a motivated seller, you say, hey, I want an option to purchase your property at this price and I'm gonna try and find somebody to buy it from me at a higher price, in which case you agree that I can sell the property and keep the difference. So you, you don't have to come up with much money for this, but to make it legal, you probably have to come up with 50 or $100 as an option free that gives you an equitable interest in that property. And then you can market the property and anything you get above what you agree to pay the seller is your profit. Now you gotta make sure you do this properly, otherwise you could be crossing the line with your local real estate board. You could get in trouble with those guys, so you gotta make sure that you do this properly through a lawyer. But again, this is another way 
that I've done personally in the past to get into deals. In fact, I did one deal that worked out really well. I made $35,000 on that deal in about six weeks doing an option. So again, that's another creative way to get into real estate without any or very little of your own money involved. Now let's talk about what I think is the best way to do real estate deals with none of your money involved. And that is by using OPM and OPC. What's OPM? Other people's money. What's OPC? Other people's credit. And quite often you combine the two of them. So for example, let's say you want to buy a single family home, you want to renovate it, you want to put a basement suite in that property, then you want to refinance that and hold on to that deal long term. That would be a, a Burr deal. Then you could do that with somebody else's money. You could bring on a joint venture partner. They come in with the cash. If they come in with the cash and they come in with the credit, then you're using OPM and OPC. In certain cases, you might have an investor who's got the cash but doesn't have the credit for the deal. In that case, you could work with two people. You could have one joint venture partner that brings in the cash, one joint venture partner that brings in the credit, and you share the deal with the two of them. Now, obviously, you'd be paying a much bigger chunk of the profits to the person who brought in the cash, but you'd also want to compensate the person that brought in the credit because they're, they're, they're providing a valuable service to you as well. But again, it wouldn't be anywhere near as much as you're paying your money partner in that case. In those kind of situations, if you're bringing somebody on with a smaller deal, they're bringing the cash and the credit to the table. Usually that's a 50-50 kind of a split. 50% of the profits go to them, 50% of the profits go to you. If you're bringing in a money partner and a credit partner and yourself, then perhaps it's 40, 40, and 10. 40 for your money partner, 10% for your credit partner, and 40% for you for finding the deal, managing the deal, doing the deal, et cetera, et cetera. So again, it's a, it's a win-win for everybody. Your money partner's able to get involved in real estate without having to do the hard work. Your credit partner is a fantastic deal for them. They haven't had to put up any money in the deal, just their credit, and they're getting a piece of the action for all of that. And you're getting very, very well compensated for putting everything together and managing it. So if you like that idea of OPM and OPC, now the next question is, who are these people? Who's going to invest with me? Who's going to be a joint venture partner with me? Who's going to be able to bring $100,000 to the table or bring their credit to the table? Well, here's the good news. Right within your existing network of contacts and connections, there is somewhere between $1 and $2 million worth of capital that's available to you. We just have to figure out who's got it and how we can access that. So what I'm going to suggest to you when it comes to OPM and OPC is you want to focus on what I call your sphere of influence, your existing network. Who's in this existing network? Your friends, your family members, co-workers, business associates, people you know from church or civic organizations, from sporting groups, that sort of thing. You've got a pre-existing relationship with these folks. Why is this important? For a couple of reasons. First of all, if somebody's going to invest fifty, seventy-five, dollars or $100,000 with you, they need to know you, they need to like you, and they need to trust you with their money. Now, if you're going out to your existing network, these people already know you, they already like you, and to a certain degree, they already trust you. We just have to figure out if they've got the capital available, if they've got the credit available, and if they're ready, willing, and able to invest that with you. So that's what we want to focus on. Focus on your existing network. So that's the first reason. Second reason is safety. What do I mean by safety? Well, again, caveat here, I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a security specialist. I'm a real estate guy and a marketer. But my understanding is it's actually illegal for you and I as a mom and pop real estate investor to go out to the general public, to go out to strangers and to try to solicit investments from them. We're crossing the line with the Securities and Exchange Commission in the States with the provincial securities regulatory authorities in Canada, and it can get you into a lot of financial hot water and even worse, right? So you don't want to mess with your securities regulatory authorities. So to stay on the safe side, typically there is an exemption for people, close friends, business associates, and relatives that you can work with, especially for doing joint venture partnerships with. So for safety's sake, that's what we want to focus on. And a third reason is it typically it's the fastest capital you're going to be able to access, right? You already got a relationship with these people. 
They know you, they like you, they trust you. If you show them what's in it for them for doing a real estate deal with you, chances are, if they're able to, they're going to invest with you a lot faster than somebody who doesn't have that relationship with you. Just makes sense, doesn't it? So now the question is, where do you find these people? How do you create a list of your contacts? Well, here's the good news. If you got one of these, a smartphone, you've already got a huge list already in hand. So you just go in to your smartphone, find your contacts and export them, get them into some sort of a spreadsheet program. Then do the same thing with your email contacts. Do the same thing with your social media contacts. And then chances are you're going to have several thousand people in there. We don't want several thousand people. We want to create a small target group of somewhere between 150 to 200 people that we have a legitimate connection with. Now, it's very, very difficult to think up 100, 150, 200 people's names. But if you do a big data dump, like I just explained to you, now instead of having to do that, now you've probably got 1,500 or 2,000 people. You can quickly go through that list. You see a name, a face pops into your mind, you like that person, keep them. You see a name, you've got no clue who that person is, delete. Keep, 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 delete, 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 keep, 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 whittle it down to 200 people. That is the trick. So then we create that list and then we're going to focus on communicating with people, educating them about what we're up to with real estate investing and allowing them to make an educated decision as to whether or not they'd like to invest with us. Hey, are you liking what you're hearing here? Well, if you do, then go ahead, click subscribe and then press the little bell button to get notified every time we've got a new video coming up. Well, hey, do you like the idea of using OPM and OPC, other people's money and other people's credit? Great. Well, if you'd like to find out how to do that, how to attract investors to you instead of chasing after them, then go ahead and get a free copy of my book, Money Partner Formula. You can get that at InvestorAttractionBook.com or click on the link that's in the description below. This book's going to show you my entire process for how to attract investors, how to create that list of ideal prospective investors, how to get their attention, how to get top of mind, stay top of mind, and have them coming to you asking about your deals, coming to you already pre-educated, pre-motivated, and predisposed to invest. So if you haven't got a copy yet, go ahead, get your copy today.